Hello, I'm Dave. I'm Carrie, and we are One Adventure at a Time. We've been living in our van full time for about four years now, and this is going to be our second winter. Yeah, our second winter with the Wabasto heater. So we think it's time. We want to share everything that we've learned in the last year, and we have learned a lot. Yes, we have. And I think some of you are going to be surprised at some of the information that we go over in this video. Yes. <laughs> so if you already have a Wabasto, this could be useful for you. If you're in the build process and you're thinking about what kind of heater you want, this also might be a valuable video for you yes, to watch. Yes, absolutely. We are going to be joined on and off through this with Van Life Outfitters. They did a really informative video, um, probably the best I've seen on the web. And this is really where we learned all of our information. So we reached out to them. They said that we could pull some of their clips from their video. So we're going to share that with you. And we want to thank Van Life Outfitters, Wabasto, and VMAX for bringing all of this information to us. Yeah, thank you. We mm -hmm. would have never found out, or if we would have, it would have been years down the road. Yeah. Now, this video is not sponsored by Wabasto. We bought the, the heater on our own, and we just want to share what we've learned. Yep. The first thing we want to cover is what model is right for you. Because I don't know if you know, but we really didn't know that there's three Wabasto models out there on the market. Now, we chose the STC 2000, which is the smallest of the three models, and it is engineered to be 100% only up to 4,900 feet elevation. Yes. So the next model up is the Evo 40, and it's engineered to be 100% output up to 7,200. Yeah, and it almost puts out twice as many BTUs yes. as the one that we have. So if yes. you have a real small space, you have to think about, is it going to get too hot or not? Yes, and that's very important because we're going to go over that a little later in the video. That's super important point. The third one is the Evo, I think it's 55, um, and that puts out even more BTUs than the Evo 40, and that must be for a much larger space. I think yeah. it'd be overkill for a van. Definitely. <laughs> you probably know one of the main concerns is carbon buildup. And that was a concern of ours as yep. well. And we have learned one trick to combat this. Yeah, you're gonna run the heater as hot as you can for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. And the timer does not start ticking on that 20 to 30 minutes until you feel hot air coming out of the heater. A hardworking heater is gonna be a clean heater. A clean heater is gonna last a lot longer for you. So that's. That's our recommendation there. When we turn our heater on, I have it set to come on at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And we typically run our heater for one hour, pretty much all the time. That's what we do. We go above and beyond. But the Wabasso Tech suggests 20 to 30 minutes as soon as it gets to full capacity every time you burn the heater. That's pretty simple. Yeah, at least. At least, yeah. Now we're going to talk about the high altitude mode. And this is where most of you are probably going to be shocked and a little surprised, but there technically is no high altitude mode. Which is confusing <laughs> because you, we've already heard about kits that you can buy for high altitude and an exhaust sniffer that you can use to help adjust it for higher altitudes. So there is some misinformation out there, I guess you could yeah. say. So Wabasso Company suggests that the ST, ST, STC 2000 and the Evo 40 are not run above their engineered altitude. And for the 2000, that's 4,900 feet. And for the Evo 40, that's 7,200 feet. So where does the high altitude mode come into play? I'm going to turn this over to Tracy, the Wabasso tech, because I think he explains it the best. Yeah. You know, we, we say the heaters are, are designed to put out their 100% output up to 4,900 feet in the case of the STC. That's for the STC diesel. We <laughs> do not recommend running the STC gas above that 4,900 feet. Gas, it's just the nature of the fuel. Uh, diesel is a lot more forgiving than gasoline. Um, to not get too deep in, into the technicalities of it, but I know a lot of van lifers do it, or DIY folks, so I'll mention this. When you're adjusting for altitude, you're slowing down those pulses 
for the fuel pump that I'm sure we're all familiar with that tick, tick. So the, the control module knows each one of those clicks, each pulse of the fuel pump is gonna deliver a, a certain amount of fuel, which is going to deliver a certain amount of heat energy. So mm -hmm. when we were adjusting for altitude, we're slowing that pulsing down and mm -hmm. gasoline burns very quick in comparison to diesel. Mm -hmm. So the gasoline, when you start getting very slow, the pulses can't come soon enough and the flame burns out. So diesel, diesel is uh, just more forgiving again at altitude. So we, we, don't adjust, we don't recommend gas heaters above that, that stated 4,900 or 7,200 feet, unfortunately. What's, what's the consequence if you do run it above a gasoline heater above 4,900 feet? Excessive carbon? Yeah, excessive carbon. Well, Vasto knows that people are using their heaters above the recommended limitations on elevation. And I know that we have. We have. <laughs> so this is where a lot of that elevation talk comes in. Yeah. So as Tracy said, if you're going to go to high elevations above the recommended settings or, or altitude, if you're just going to do it a day or a week, pretty much go and do that. Run your heater hot. When you come back down in elevation, run your heater for a few hours, maybe overnight. But he suggests if you're going to even tamper with the um, rate of flow of the fuel, don't really do it unless you're living at high altitude. Yes. And by living, he means several weeks or several months. And it's not just an easy fix. Like you have to adjust this at the altitude that you're at. You have to have a, what is it called? A gas sniffer yep. or an exhaust gas analyzer. You have to know the skills on how to do that. And when you come down from elevation, you have to reset it at the elevation you're at. Yep. So this is just something that we don't really want to mess with. We're no. not at these high elevations that long a time. We're not living there. And personally, not that it's recommended, but we have ran our heater at mm -hmm. higher altitudes. And we, just like Carrie said, we ran it hot. And then later on, when we move down to lower elevations, we might run the heater all night yeah. on full blast just to blow whatever carbon's built up and they're out. Yeah. And when we go, like last summer, we were in Colorado. We barely came under 9,000 feet. There were a couple of nights it was cold that I could turn the heater on. But I took into consideration what altitude we were at yep. and chose not to run the heater at that time. So this is why it's really important to know which heater is going to be best for you. Because the result of burning your heater above the Wabasto limitations could be excessive carbon buildup. Yeah, and it's not a complete loss. I mean, what, if the heater does build up full of carbon, there is a kit. You can clean it out yourself yes. and you can uh, put the new gaskets in and your heater will pretty much be like brand new again. So it's not a horrible thing. Yeah, it, it's not. Your heater's not dead in the water. Yeah. It's just a little bit more time and effort and maybe some inconvenience to clean it. Yep. If you're in North America and you buy the Russian version or a European version over there, um, it's going to make things a lot more complicated when it comes to getting technical support or even parts. And yes. so that could end up costing you more money. It may not be covered by the warranty. Um, so basically, like if you're here in North America, you want to buy yourself the North American version. So if you buy a heater from outside of North America, you're getting from our, our perspective an unknown um, set of programming, just because I don't know that here in North America, it's not our product, essentially. Uh, the other issue though, really, and to me the biggest issue is kit content is different. And I don't know the specifics of that. I think Scott has probably dug into that a lot more than I have, but the warranty. Mm -hmm. So Wabasto is, I'm gonna admit, I think we go above and beyond. Of course, I'm gonna say that, but I really believe we go above and beyond in the warranty aspect. We don't, we want to give you a warranty if it's at all possible. Now, if the heater comes from, you said Russia. So if it comes from Russia, we're going to support you. If you call our tech line, we're going to support you, you know, whether you're the end user or if somebody has showed up at your shop with a heater that has a, um, a foreign, I call it foreign wiring harness you're not familiar with, you don't have pinouts. We'll help you every, every bit as much as we possibly can. If it's under warranty though, the end user is gonna to have to pay for that service and then take their receipt, take their documentation to the place they purchased the heater from to get reimbursed. 
The other thing is if you're in North America and you buy one of these, say the Russian kit, they may not be able to get the parts or it could take several weeks or months. So it's just a little bit more headache, yeah. and inconvenience, and so maybe some extra money out of your pocket. Something that you're not going to want to have to go through in the winter when it's cold and that's your only heat, yeah. heat source. Yes. Now, Webasto is going to stand behind their product and they are going to work with you to get this done. It just makes sometimes a lot more work for everybody involved. Yeah, so, and basically the unit's the same everywhere. It's just the electronics are different. So, they, so that's the part where it gets confusing if you're mm -hmm. ordering or you have technical problems is figuring out what electronics that you actually have in your unit. Yeah, or sometimes the kits don't come with everything you need and then you have to match up those parts to... Yep. Back. And so this is where we suggest Van Life Outfitters. They have been extremely helpful. They can get all the parts that you need and they can do legwork for you. We are going to leave all their information in the video description and in the comments below. And we highly, highly, highly suggest that you watch the video that they put out on their YouTube channel. And they did want us to mention this specifically because this is a problem that they have seen and it's something that they can't control. They're doing their best to help you, but sometimes these warranties come into play and it causes a little bit of inconvenience. Yep. The last thing we wanna to touch on is your maintenance. How to keep your heater burning efficiently and for a very long time. Yeah, so we got some tips for that. The major tips are when you burn it, burn it hot and burn it for at least 20 to 30 minutes and burn it every month of the year even if you're in florida and it's 90 degrees yeah so open up the doors turn on an air conditioner do whatever you have to mm -hmm. to make that heater work hard yes the other thing that needs to be done is check out the exhaust because if you're in cold weather it creates condensation so if that condensation gets trapped in your exhaust hose and it freezes that could cause some major problems yeah Valleys. if you have any low spots so if you can you you can't get it to where it's going to go basically downhill all the way out where water can run out the exhaust mm -hmm. pipe, then you're gonna need to drill a couple of yeah. holes in the low spots. Yeah. And replace the fuel filter every year. You can get these off the Van Life Outfitters website. Um, they're about $27-ish, and we are overdue on that, so we will be doing that very soon. Yeah. And lastly, try not to let your gas tank get super low. Yeah, so the tap that's already in the ProMaster goes to, I wanna say, three quarters of the way down into the tank itself. So if you get any lower in that and on fuel, you're not gonna get any. You might get an air bubble in it and have to restart yeah, the it heater. Could, it could cause a problem. So it's just a, ma a minor inconvenience. Yeah. I do wanna add one thing. So uh, if you're running your, your heater, you wanna check the exhaust coming out. You should only see a little bit of smoke when you start it up and when you turn it off. So if it's smoking the whole time you're running it, you probably have a carbon buildup. Yeah. In conclusion, we want you to be fully informed and make the best decision for you and the right heater because this is our third heater in four years and I think we found the right heater for us. Now, because this guy loves the snow and we're at constant high elevations, say like 7,200 feet, we probably should have went with the Evo 40, which I would have loved because it'd be a sauna in here. Now, for, now for me... It'd just be too hot for us and for, for me in this small space. And so, we don't live at these high elevations, so I think yeah. we're matched pretty well with the I, STC 2000. Yeah, I think we got the right heater. I just wish we would have started with this heater uh, right from the beginning of the build mm -hmm. and not had to go through the challenge of trying all those other heaters and wasting money on that. Yeah. So what's your favorite things about the heater? Okay, so first of all, it sips gas. I mean... After about 20 hours, it only uses a gallon of gasoline. So you don't even notice it we, on the gas gauge. We can run it all week and we never have to worry about it. For me, there's three requirements that I need for van life. I need to be able to stand in the van. I need to be able to have a toilet. And my third one is this heater. It makes such a difference for me. This feels like an apartment. This is my home. I can be comfortable in it and I'm happy and it just makes a world of difference. Yeah, it gives us a lot of flexibility to go to places that we couldn't if we didn't have this heater. We don't yeah. have to worry if it's zero degrees outside. We're going to be fine. We have been in Stanley, Idaho, above the recommendations at negative nine degrees. 
And this heater is the only reason why we were able to do that. Yep. So we absolutely love it. Again, this is not a sponsored video. We want to thank Van Life Outfitters. We highly encourage you to check out their website. They have an Instagram, which is super informative. I love following them on Instagram. And the video they did on this, it's quite long, but this is where we learned all of our information. We did not know this before. And I think most people out there who have the heater don't know this. So we hope this video helped you out, decide maybe which heater you want to go with, or if you, you know, want to try out one of these types of heaters, which we fully recommend. And how to keep it running at its yep. optimal efficiency. Yep. Make it last as long yep. as possible. Again, we want to thank Van Life Outfitters. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We hope you've learned as much as we have from them. And stay warm, stay safe, and we will see you on the road. What you doing, Dave? Staining up already. Look how hard it's snowing. We just got on the road. It looked like fall. No snow at all. And now all of a sudden, boom.